Hey guys, it's Ryan, and today I thought I'd show you a fun little technique on how to create a repeating grass texture block like the ones found in Hytale. I've been creating a lot of Hytale inspired artwork lately, and as a continuation of that, I thought I'd try replicating one of the grass blocks that could be found within Hytale. If you'd like to follow along with any of this, the project is available in the description below. Okay, so the first thing is we'll take a look at what we're going to create. So we'll have this image here, and this is the block that we're going to take a look at. If we break this down, you can see that it only has three unique faces. We have a grass texture on top, a grass and soil texture on the four sides, and finally, there should be a soil texture on the bottom based on other materials I've seen. If you take a closer look on the four sides, which have the grass and soil, they're all actually just a repeated pattern, which gives us the opportunity to get creative with our UVs. This block is also one cubic meter. Each face of the cubic meter has 32 pixels on both the X and Y direction. This is information we need to know for the texturing process later. Now that we've studied the block, let's create our own. This is pretty simple, but I'll show you how to do it anyways. Okay, so we're in 3D Max here, and I'll just click this box over here. Click and drag the box into the viewport to make a square. Go over to the right to the parameters tab and type in 100 centimeters in the height, width and length. To align the block to the center of the grid, I simply right click on the model and select move and then right click on the arrows on the boxes below. I'll give the model a simple name like block and that's our model created. Select your box, go to file, export, export selected and give your file a name. I'll change the file type to obj from fbx and then hit save. I'll then tick these few boxes and select export and that's it, we're done with the modeling process. Let's move on to the UV stage of our model. For those who have no idea what UVs are, Google would say UVs are two-dimensional texture coordinates that correspond with the vertex information of your geometry, which understandably sounds like gibberish to anyone that doesn't really understand what UVs are. The easiest way I find to think of UVs is if you have a cardboard box and you just flatten it out, that's basically the process of unwrapping your model. It just allows you to see your 3D model in a 2D flat space, which you can then paint in Photoshop or other similar software. Unwrapping your model doesn't physically change the structure of your model, it just changes the way the UVs look. If you create a box in 3D, the UVs are also in 3D. So you use the process of unwrapping to flatten the UVs out. This might take some time to understand, but UVs are essential, but are also the most hated things when it comes to 3D. However, once you understand them, they're actually pretty easy and can even be fun to do. You won't have to worry too much about this when Hytale's Model Maker releases, as it seems to automatically generate the UVs in 2D space. But some of the techniques that we'll cover here are still relevant when packing your UVs in Hytale's Model Maker. Anyways, back to the model. For the UVs, I'll set my resolution and grid resolution to 64 pixels. This doesn't directly affect your model, but since I'm working on a per pixel base when texturing, I want to get my UVs as pixel perfect as I can. I'll import the model into the scene, and if you look here, it has a 3D view of the model and it has a 3D view of the UV, and that's because the model isn't unwrapped. So I'll click here to do an automatic box unwrap, which will split the faces at the seams. Now we'll go about organizing our UVs. So I'll select the top and bottom face of the cube and move them to one side. Now I'll we'll select all four faces and stack them together. Stacking UVs has a lot of great benefits, which I'll cover in another tutorial in the future. But for now, just know it's a great way to save space, time and processing power. But like I said, I'll get into that stuff on a later date. Now, I'm making each of the UVs exactly 32 pixels by 32 pixels. I scale them in line with the grid up to 32 of the grid squares, which are the equivalent of pixels since I changed that earlier. Now that our model is unwrapped, we'll export the UV as a texture and bring that into Photoshop for a quick paint test. So I'll just speed this part up, but all I'm doing is laying down the basic colors for our texture to preview in Marmoset. So now that we're in Marmoset, if I rotate the model to preview my texture, you can see one of the sides of the model are incorrectly orientated. To correct this, I'll move back into Rizom UV. 
I'll start off by importing a custom texture so that I can better see the orientation of my faces. To edit the orientation of a face, you can simply use the rotation and flip buttons that you can see here. If I move over back to Marmoset, you can see that it's automatically updated my UVs. Okay, now that everything's set, we can continue to paint our texture in Photoshop. I'll just speed this process up so that we can move on to the final task, which is setting up our final render. I'm just adding the final touches to the texture and then we'll move back into Marmoset. So like I said before, the material automatically updates right out of Photoshop. I decided to try stacking a few of the blocks together to get a better idea of how they looked. Don't forget if you want to try designing your own texture, the project is in the description below. And that's basically how to create a block type for Hytale. There are many different blocks in Hytale that are done in a very similar fashion. I'll be sure to cover them all in future videos. If you guys enjoy this type of content, like this video and consider subscribing. However, that's all the time I have for now, I'll see you around.